Good day. This is our introductory lecture on elementary computational analysis with the course code CSC 101. I am your instructor, Mrs. Regine Bakabis Nakazato, and I will be introducing you to the world of computational analysis. First question that might pop up into your mind right now is what is computational analysis? Computational analysis also known as numerical analysis, is a mathematical technique used for solving mathematical problems that cannot be solved or difficult to solve analytically. In other words, computational analysis is used if a certain solution is difficult to acquire with analytical method alone. Now, what is analytical method? Analytical method, which acquires analytical solutions, are what most of you are very familiar with when it comes to solving mathematical problems. In fact, it is the exact answer in the form of a mathematical expression in terms of the variable associated with the problem that is being solved. Thus, once a solution is acquired analytically, that solution is the exact answer to the problem with no error whatsoever. Now, on the other hand, the numerical solution acquires the approximated answer to a problem. You might be wondering, why would I want an approximation rather than an exact answer? Note that there are some things in this world wherein we don't have any idea what the exact answer is, such as how big are universes or how old are universes, uh, the weather for today or tomorrow or the next day, and of course, our lifespan, at what exact age could we die? If there are things that we can measure or acquire exactly, then it is worth approximating it instead rather than not knowing it all, such as knowing the approximation of our lifespan, depending on our quality of life, the weather, depending on the forecast, and etc. To further discuss the definition of numerical analysis, here is a simple example. Assuming you are a chemist and you are conducting an experiment to test the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law is defined as PV equals an nRT, where P is pressure, V is volume, T is temperature, N is the number of moles of an ideal gas, and R is the constant that depends on the measurement system. You don't have to worry if you don't know any chemistry. This is just a brief demonstration. So, suppose you conducted two experiments. On the first experiment, you used the following values. So, these are the following values you used. And you solve this using the ideal gas law and acquire a temperature of 17 degrees Celsius. Assuming also, on the other hand, that you conducted an actual experiment. That is, it is a physical experiment present with an actual setup. With the same variables you used, you acquire a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. In this case, you might start to wonder why the answer for the ideal gas law is 17 degrees Celsius while the actual temperature is 15 degrees Celsius instead. Now, on the second experiment, you use the same values of R and N, but increase the pressure by a factor of 2 and reduce the volume by the same factor. Of course, the solution, if you use the ideal gas law, should be the same. It is still 17 degrees Celsius. However, using the same variables, variable value on your actual experiment, you now acquired a new temperature of 19 degrees Celsius. So, at this point, you might start to doubt the ideal gas law. But note that since the ideal gas law is a law and have been proven correct by countless computation and experiment, it is for sure that the ideal gas law is not at fault here. So it could be the data we use and other factors attributed to the error of the result. So if we could determine the cause of the error and how much its magnitude is, we might be able to adapt to it and repeat the experiment again and again with just the data until the minimal error is acquired. That is basically what computational analysis or numerical analysis is. Thus, it is some kind of an approximation 
but can be very accurate provided that the calculations are done iteratively until a derived accuracy with less error is achieved. So what do you expect for this subject or what do you look forward to? Well, first and foremost, you must be able to understand and implement some numerical algorithms. There are a lot of them. And if you have a mat adequate mathematical background, I'm pretty sure you can understand and will um, learn easily from the algorithm. The application that will be used on the implementation will be Python. So as of now, if you don't have any background or idea how to code on Python, I'm suggesting that you start studying and start experimenting on the uh, programming language. And of course, since we are um, using lecture videos, I will give you all the resources you need as long as I can provide it, such as books, copies of slides, and other lecture notes that you will be needing. So don't forget or don't get shy to approach me on my messenger or through my email if you need anything or ask any question. And lastly, of course, you will be challenged to will be challenged with the subject. You'll be provided with a lot of projects and seat works and other stuff that will improve your mathematical, logical, and of course, your programming skills. So that is all. And on the next lecture video, I will be uh, introducing or uh, lecturing some important topics of calculus. It will be just a review. That is to prepare you to the uh, some numerical algorithms because most of them are cal with calculus background. So see you on the next video and thank you.